Texas Podcast Massacre contains spoilers and adult language. For more horror, visit us at our website at texaspodcastmassacre.com. Welcome to another episode of Texas Podcast Massacre, coming to you from Houston, Texas. I'm your host, Mitch, and with me, as always, are my uh, go- uh, garden shear wielding maniacs, Nate. <laughs> that's all. That's a mouthful. Right? <laughs> Don't fight it. Don't fight it. <laughs> mm. And Lisa. Foreshadowing. Written by Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> This is a Harvey Weinstein yeah. original. Literally. Oh, my goodness. Original story written by Harvey Weinstein. Yep. Uh, well, welcome to another episode of Texas Podcast Massacre, where each week we take a look at a different horror movie and debate a horror-related topic with our unsuspecting victim, who is usually someone we would not consider a horror fan. I say usually because this week we're going to summer camp with our returning friend, Kev Castle, from the Don, Tony, and Kevin Castle show. Um, so, Lisa, you will be our unsuspecting victim Solo as we review 1981's The Burning, not burning, The Burning. And I say that because I've run into that movie about 50 times in the search trying to find it to watch for this uh, episode. So if you're into South Korean thrillers, though, burning. I am. <laughs> I am. If you are looking for the movie we're talking about, The Burning. Very important. I'd, I'd say I'm saying this now, Nate, because the last few weeks, my my mouth works faster than my brain and I have said the t- wrong name of the movie at least three times. <laughs> There's always a the in the beginning that I keep forgetting or, or, um, or not omitting. Right. You yes. Know? So anyway, um, so Kevin's going to join us in a little bit. So before we get into that, let's get into a debate question. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. All right, it's in the burning. Kratzy, we're going to get into in in in, in detail. Ooh. Um he murders everyone with garden shears because he was like the 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 groundskeeper. groundskeeper I mean, he was Willie. groundskeeper's Willie. Yeah, thank you, Nate. My question is though, you know, garden shears they're 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 fine, but you know, you kind of really need you can't really it's not a one-handed weapon. Yeah, two it's, hands. It's, it's a little cumbersome. It does gets the job done, but you know, I feel like there's some defense against it. Is there a better gardening tool? You could have used. And Nate, I'm going to start. I'm going to, I want to throw it off to you. First, I thought, you know, let's. Cropsy is kind of a big dude using garden shears, a lot of stabbing. First thing I thought was, why not just a straight up hose? A lot of choking. Oh, you would choke him with the hose. Choke him with the hose, like hang him up by a, like kind of like leather face style. It's like kind of prop him up on something, Mm -hmm. then kill him. But then I thought, no, if I'm the killer, I'm going to be a little more mischievous. What am I going to be using to kill everybody? A garden gnome. I'm just going to have a garden gnome just whacking people. Like just stabbed right through him. The hat. Like I get two out the garden gnomes. I set up one garden gnome on this path. They stop and go, what the hell is that? While they're stopped, I hit them with the second garden gnome. I got to lug around two garden gnomes. I probably got a wagon for them. Other than that, absolutely money. Oh my God. There's no place like gnome. That's the t- that's the tagline for my movie. I'm just turn. I'm literally just turning physically <laughs> away from Nate. <laughs> How cool? Hold on. How creepy is a garden gnome? Pretty. It can be very Fairly creepy. creepy. Mine is not de- as creepy as trolls. Mine has creepy. dead eyes for sure. I'm gonna okay. paint like the eyes just straight black. This gnome is gonna taunt you. <laughs> then I hit you with the club. Now is the it, and this is the gnome talking to you. Like, do you hear the gnome's oh, voices? Oh, okay. Yeah, I can throw that in there. Why okay. not? I like it. I like it. I kill them all. And then, yeah. and then I just hit them. Use the white chipper. Plus, you know? I can drop it on somebody mm-hmm. and I can throw it. So I got a little bit more range than the shears, also. I'm, I like it. You know, you, you could like, uh, you could Blair Witch it. Every every hour, more gnomes are showing it's, up. Oh my the God. House. Imagine, imagine you wake up from a campsite and it is surrounded by garden gnomes. Yeah, I mean, I think we're done oh. here. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> who's topping right, gnomes. Lisa, you are you are you have thoughts on the I'm gnomes? Not supposed to, I can't go after that. Yeah, you don't, right. wait. Hold on. Do you like the gnome idea? Yeah, the gnome. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's out of the box. Outside the box. It takes place. Hold on. My movie is it's a camp. It's got to be in the summer, and it's in Gnome, Alaska. 
Camp Gnome wear. <laughs> oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. <laughs> yes. Dude, Alaska did not get enough movies. It, so, it, not, it, especially not camp movies. <laughs> right. Right. I don't know too many people go camp. That's in their kids to camp. Yep. Uh, it's, that's fine. Uh, I, yeah. Bring it. Follow that up. <laughs> I, I don't know that I can. Um, I certainly thought about, okay, you could set up a bunch of those like water fi- features and like the little <laughs> things, but they're like, they're just blood coming out of them when you kill someone. Like that's not really people, a weapon. A hundred people drowning in a koi pond. Now I'm just, now I'm just thinking, yeah, it's more just like how, how you would de- uh, decorate your, your murder shed out in the woods. <laughs> um, man, uh, like Mitch is the first killer who ever kills people with like track lighting or something <laughs> like that, that's your go-to move yeah look i'm like allergic to like grass so i don't really go out in the yard oh. much so my 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 knowledge of garden tools is limited. oh every person you kill you just spray fertilizer like in their mouth or something and then they just poison them to death yeah i mean the oh best- that would be brutal you knock them out with the gnome and then, and then once they're out. God, this is I just hilarious. don't know that I'd come up with anything. No, I mean, I what, promise no, no, I've fine, not fine. thought of this I would, before. I would use, I would use, but it's kind of like gnomes. It's, it's the, uh, the pathway lights. Okay. Yeah. You know, they're just spikes. There, <laughs> they just know? walk off a cliff. <laughs> like you just leave. They're like, Oh, yeah, it's so dark. You can just walk yeah, right off. A cliff. You can stab them. You can electrocute someone with them. Yeah. You can lead them off a cliff. You're just tripping people over cliffs. Yeah. Okay. Like if this is if this is the it's long the video game lemming if this is the long night <laughs> and you okay. can't see where you're going you're just following a path blindly yeah it's like the railroad track you know you just like turn off one segment and the other one turns on and yeah. it's like oh I guess we're going right now okay yeah wow that's where I'm gonna settle on Lisa so, so Mitch just placing lights wow very very scary Y'all don't have definitely murdering at night not during the day gardened anything in your lives have you. Yeah, I have not. I just got gardened this last weekend. <laughs> I what did I, you do? I did. I I I removed plants. But right. <laughs> I will count that as gardening. Unlike Nate, I invest in the local economy and I help create jobs and opportunities. What, but you're, what, oh, you're like, <laughs> like I got I got a lighting guy, and that guy's like I got <laughs> no. gangbusters. Look, it's like hang, it's like King of the Hill. I've got a lighting guy. I've got. <laughs> All right, Lisa. What do yeah. you What do you got? Garden. I don't know lights. what the name of this tool is called, but it's the Travel. tool. Kind of, but it's a tool you use and when you're trying to plant flowers and you stab it down and then squeeze it together and pull out a chunk of dirt. Almost like a like a post digger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. smaller, right? Okay. Because you're trying to create just these divots for... Hey, how put, are you killing someone with that? You're jabbing it in, squeezing it and ripping out their guts. But like it's like not sharp. It's like... Yes, they are. Because you got to pierce the ground with them. Sure, but it's not like... It's like, ow. Wait, calm down, gnome, on, on hey, blood, what's the more realistic? Blood force. <laughs> okay, so is it like Indiana Jones? I would Jones? sharpen them. Is it Indiana Jones? Like, you just, like, grab someone's heart out and you just, like, pull it yeah, out of them? Yeah, pretty much. And then oh. set Stab in, close, pull out. <laughs> it's a close range you weapon. Ple- Why are you doing the gesture yeah, at me? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you're me. like, you already get it. Yeah. It's already and it's half-hearted when you're doing it, Nate. You're like, yeah. mm. <laughs> You're like, if you're going to kill Nate, kill him half, like more than half-heartedly. <laughs> yeah, well, go full-heartedly. Uh, well, that was a debate. Wow. God damn. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, I think... I think... Um, well, yeah. If- I, say, I say the winner is the gnomes, but with Lisa's hand gestures. Okay. Like, if she did that with the gnome... I got to articulate with the gnome more. Okay. Right. That's yeah, my that's fault. The, that's I, the I winner. Apologize for uh, that. If you have a different gardening weapon you would have used <laughs> in this movie... Jesus. Uh, send us a video of you making a mock gesture of how to do it at <laughs> TexasPodcastMassacre at gmail.com uh, or on our socials at TXPodMassacre on Twitter and Texas Podcast Massacre on Facebook and Instagram. Um, with that said, we're going to get... Kevin Castle on the line so we can review this week's movie of the week, The Burning. This summer, if you're planning to go camping, don't. If you're looking forward to midnight swims, don't. Sneak on back to the campsite. Get some matches. Build us a hot fire. And if you're thinking about being with someone where no one can see you, don't. Because this summer, a legend of terror isn't just a campfire story anymore. They say he smashed his way through the bunk room door, just a mass of flames. 
cried out, I will return! I will have my revenge! He lives on whatever he can catch. Right now, he's out there, watching, waiting. Who's there? What happened one summer five years ago is about to happen again, and again, and again. The Burning. Can we all just agree Edgar Wright ripped the shit out of this for Grindhouse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the don't trailer from Grindhouse is literally 100% this. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Well, cool. Well, uh, we want to welcome our guest this week uh, from the Don Tony and Kevin Castle show. We're welcoming back Kev Castle. How's it going, man? Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So, uh, yeah, we uh, we talked about wanting. You mentioned you wanted to do a a slasher film, and I was kind oh, of looking, yeah. kind of looking through some ones that are a little, little. I don't know if this is more obscure, but it certainly it's a little older. And then I was like, oh, this, yeah, this would be a good one. Um. So you've seen, uh, did you, you saw this one, uh, you guys, you've seen this one already before tonight, right? I saw it in the movies in 1981 when I was uh, 13 years old. Oh, this I is saw, yeah. sweet. Ooh, this yeah, is I, not a 13 I, year old I saw old it when it first movie. came out. Yeah. I was just, no, it wasn't for, we, <laughs> we, we bribed some guy who was 19 to get us in and we paid him. And I remember where I went, I went to this movie theater called the Oceana, which is long gone here in Brooklyn. And uh, so all of my, me and my seventh and eighth grade friends, and we all wanted to see it. And any slashers, slashers were so big then that, that we, those were always the movies we went to and waited outside and you would get someone who was over 18 or 21 to buy your tickets. It was that easy. Nobody micromanaged anything. It was, it was pretty simple to get in our movies, get alcohol, get weed, get whatever you wanted to get back in the day. There was no, it's not like today, you know, no, and that's, I'm going to say no one cared, but Nobody cared. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. So uh, I haven't, I know I, I feel like I've seen this movie, but I didn't remember anything. Nate, you said you, you had seen this. Yeah. Previously. I'd, I'd, I'd rewatched it recently just for absolutely no reason. So Lisa, so. yeah. As our unsuspecting victim, since, yeah, since we all know Kev's a horror fan, like me and Nate describe this movie. What is the burning? Uh, not to be confused with burning, because it took me a long time to find a yeah. copy that Burning wasn't a Korean, last year, a Korean, <laughs> like, South Korean thriller movie. Yeah. This is not that. Not that movie. What is this movie, Lisa? My honest review of what actually happened. <laughs> yeah, what movie. is this? Just yeah. the elevator pitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a guy gets burned and then seeks revenge on a group of unsuspecting counselors and kids who all look like interchangeable so it's well is there any other kind of ca- camp counselor in a, in a horror movie they're all <laughs> unsuspecting at this point right there's no oh, like, yeah there's no, the only I, kid who's ever fought back was Corey feldman he was not a counselor to be fair and, now, now this movie came out in 981 and and you'll get to know your facts but i think at a point if you take a camp counselor job today you just should assume you're going to get murdered by someone in a, in a hockey mask or something <laughs> oh god I, right i mean it's i feel like that's it's like a hundred percent at least guarantee. be prepared yeah so so my wife watched this movie with me and at the end of the movie she goes we're not sending our kid to a camp of any kind ever <laughs> math, math, math camp math camp is out we're in houston there's space camps around those are also awesome. all say, camps i was about to say does this does this movie happen in a in camps besides just like going out in the woods like yeah i went to space camp as a kid i don't think uh and i can't see i mean jason x maybe i guess what if Which, someone you were in that thing the giant the centrifuge thing? Yeah, yeah the big centrifuge yeah. thing and then they killed the person operating it and just left you there well, that would be unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> See, it could happen. I don't and, know how long you and, could. And, and my wife and I can guarantee that won't happen in our living room. <laughs> so the kid, <laughs> the kid is not going to any camps. Okay. Oh God. So, so Kev, um, one of the things with this movie, uh, you know, is is the main is the main character Cropsy. Mm-hmm. Now, when I was looking this up, they mentioned that this is sort of a. Uh, kind of a New York area urban legend around Cropsey. Mm -hmm. Were you aware of that before you saw the movie or, or um, any Cropsey tales, you know, outside of the movie, I guess. Well, they shed some light on it. There's a, in Staten Island, New York, which is one of the boroughs here. um, There was um, 
uh, some sort of mental institution <clears throat> that closed down, and some guy, uh, some it wasn't Cropsey's a, an offshoot on on a urban legend thing, but there was some guy who was supposedly living in some sort of um, abandoned. There was a lot of abandoned property back then in the late seventies, early eighties in Staten Island. It was kind of like a, a wasteland, so to speak. It's much more built up now. It's much much more known now for mafia wives and mob wives and shows like that because. A lot of highfalutin people live out there now. A lot of mobsters from the old days have houses in an area called Toad Hill. But there's some – and my dad actually lived out there before he passed away. His girlfriend owned a house out there, so he moved from Brooklyn to Staten Island. But they had um, some institutions back then. And back in the 70s, they closed down a lot of these places because, my God, you don't even know the conditions – were, were unbelievable when I just said nobody cared about certain things before. That also worked in the medical facility for certain people who were special needs and stuff. The treatment was disgraceful. Um, there was all sorts of scandals and stuff here throughout the state of New York. It was not a good time, late 70s, early 80s. And supposedly one of these guys, I mean, there's a couple of different offshoots to the, to the tale, but it's loosely based on, on a, basically a, a mentally ill person who kind of holed up and went back into the uh, asylum after it was closed and they found them there and supposedly he was implicated in a murder either of a of a kid or or some woman or somebody people who were missing was pinned on this guy and um it, it, but the the funny thing about the burning not really funny but I really didn't understand the correlation to be honest with you except for the Cropsey name I think there was some kind of correlation there which is where the guys got the name from the Weinstein brothers and yes the Harvey Weinstein who was in all the controversy with the, the alleged sexual assaults, and you guys know the story. Harvey was a young producer back then, like a budding mogul, and they backed this movie, the Weinstein Brothers, who went on to be like one of the two most powerful men in Hollywood industry. But back then, they were just in their late 70s, early 80s, they were just looking to franchise a horror film uh, to cop off of Sean Cunningham's um, Friday the 13th, which they originally had involvement with and then had a falling out. There's a lot to this story. There's like... The burning is an interesting thing. It, it, it kind of is very revolutionary in a lot of ways because even though it, it is perceived as a ripoff of Friday the 13th, Tom Savini has actually gone on record and thinks The Burning is a better film. Um, he's talked about uh, just it should have been a franchise, should have been part two, three, four. But the Weinsteins went on to do so many other things. The Burning was just a jump start for them. Then they kind of just forgot about it. You know what I mean? It was kind of – they, they, they financed this thing. It didn't make the money. If you guys research, I'm sure you do. You guys do a lot of research. It, the burning wasn't that successful in, in in the box office. I don't know if you checked the uh, the gate receipts or how it did. It was considered a flop, actually. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we got those numbers. And surprisingly, the movie did great in Japan. <laughs> it, did. it did. It did great. It did great overseas. And then it had its life on VHS where everybody was – everybody and their mother was renting it because word got out, especially that raft scene became – Around like you talk around the campfire tales, that raft scene became, you know, infamous. Like you got to check this out. This guy slices up people's hands and raft because it was so graphic for its time. I watch it now and I don't think. I mean, well, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but since it's such a main part of the movie, that was really what sold it to people on, on V. It's like, oh, is that that movie where he chops the guy's hands off? And again, it, it was one of those things that it was word of mouth, but when it actually came out. For some reason, it didn't do that despite being backed by the Weinsteins, despite being backed by a major studio. It was perceived as a Friday the 13th ripoff. I personally didn't see it that way at all, other than that it was in the woods. You know what I mean? It was a, it was a different story than Friday the 13th, which obviously there was a, the woman was turned out to be a killer of the mother, and there was a boy who drowned. This was a guy who got burned. There was a correlation, but I, I didn't see it as a ripoff at all. I thought it was just as good as Friday the 13th. It actually kept me in suspense a lot more. Friday the 13th, the original bored me, to be honest with you. So I, I thought the burning was a little bit more action. Yeah, the first yeah. Friday the 13th, too, was a little bit um, up until the the great ending. It's it's all right. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. What, what, what else can you tell us about this one? Well, yeah, so, so this one came out May 8th, 1981. It's a tight mm -hmm. 91 minutes. Uh, the tagline is a legend of terror is no campfire story anymore. A little wordy, <laughs> a little wordy on that one. Uh, th there was another tagline because this kind of came out opposite Friday the 13th to part two, which Correct, Tom Savini yeah. worked on, decided to work on the burning instead of coming back to Friday the 13th too, which is mm -hmm. again, another huge, uh, you know, just indication of how much he loved the movie. The one of the other taglines was today is not, the f today is not Friday the 13th, but if you see this movie alone, you'll never be the same again. 
<laughs> which is a straight shot across the bat, oh, yeah. which I love. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a war between the two pictures, especially with the Savini connection. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the budget of this movie was one point five million and the box mm-hmm. office in the U.S. was only seven hundred thousand. So, yeah. yeah, it didn't do super well there. I, I saw uh, uh, an article that said in Japan it released later that year in September and it made $283,000 in a week at four cinemas. Unbelievable. So it was just like blowing the house down in this one place in Tokyo. Um, it eventually grossed over a million dollars just in Japan, which is crazy. Yeah, I, 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 this is the movie. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Um, <laughs> as, as, as we mentioned, uh, Harvey and Bob Weinstein, this is the start of their producing career. Yeah. The original mm-hmm. story was written by Harvey Weinstein. Uh, and all of, all of the male characters in this movie graduated from the Harvey Weinstein school of consent. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it was, it was, Oh my God, man, it was hard. Not in to, retrospect, it's even hard for grosser. it to not color it a little bit. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Uh, do not apply for that school. <laughs> Another guy with a writer credit in this movie is Brad Gray. He ended up becoming the CEO of Paramount Pictures. I mean, this movie yeah, powerful launched, people, powerful launched people. some people, yeah. which is crazy. Um, I mean, it's that's nuts. This was the first movie for uh, Jason Alexander, uh, George Costanza. Yeah. Yeah. You got Fisher Stevens uh, and you got Holly Hunter. So these are the first movies from them. Fisher Stevens, Holly Hunter, both won Oscars. This mm-hmm. is their first movie. I mean, this movie just launched a lot of things, just like you were saying, Kevin. Um, yeah, it really did. I mean, yeah, which is crazy because uh, it's a movie about Cropsy, a guy who kills people with garden chairs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one, one of the cool things, there's so many cool things in this movie, but one of the cool things I wanted to mention was uh, the original ending was supposed to be... Um, was supposed to take place in a cave. Uh, they, 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 they ended up not shooting it there. Tom Savini scouted an, because the cave had apparently a bunch of bats in it. Tom Savini went and scouted another cave. They were supposed to use it a couple days before the shoot. They were going to do their, the cave collapsed. Oh shit. Yeah. Wow. Then they ended up going to the, to the mine, right? That's where they filmed the finale of the movie. Uh, the copper mine had so much dust in it that uh, that the director, uh, Tony Malum, said he was coughing up dust for weeks after the film stopped shooting. Oh, God. So the finale did not go according to plan, uh, but you know, ended up turning out pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lisa, so you alluded to kind of your overall thought. This was your first burning. So the, yeah. the first time you've been burned. Is that... Is that uh, correct, uh, <laughs> Lisa? Yes. <laughs> so, overall thoughts you've you've seen your share of slasher movies now, um, and you've seen plenty of Tom Savini. Yeah, remind me. Was well, there something else we watched? Oh, well, the Grindhouse. Grindhouse. Stuff, he's he's right? in. He's yeah. literally in he's, it. He's he's kind of like the main like special effects. I mean, yeah, for the, like practical in like, the eighties, yeah, especially eighties, in late seventies, early eighties. He was money. Yeah, yeah. practical effects. Mm. <laughs> I don't feel like he saved this one. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So what did you not? What? So what did you not like? So obviously the movie is 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 you know early '80s, so it's a totally different time frame. But yeah. Any any what stuck out to you? I mean, like you said, Nate, the egregious, over the top. Every single guy at the camp was just a creep the whole time. Yeah. And then. I, I don't, I don't know. There's, I'm sure people could debate. I'm not a huge Friday the 13th fan by any stretch of the imagination, but there's like 10 of those and they didn't make a sequel for this one. I don't know. They didn't quite, it I, seemed, it seemed slightly too campy to me. Was that a little too campy? Was that a joke or campy? Well, it wasn't oh a, no, well, but that's a great. Camp. Pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying, Kevin? Oh, was it a camp? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I probably so. had something to do with it. Right. That's like if it was on the ocean, I'd say it was very oceany. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, too much water. But uh, <laughs> Too much water. But 
Well, I think because the Weinstein's again, the powerful these guys really climbed up the ladder after this film, and they just kind of said that was then, and we're on to other things now. I think no one ever picked up the ball with it. I know Tom Savini thought there should have been a two or three crops. He should have been developed as a character, uh, but they just didn't do it. I, I don't think it was. Oh, this is not worth it because the underground buzz on that was tremendous throughout the 80s and then there was different versions of it in europe and japan japan came out with uh like actually a cropsy figure uh, they even had in posters and uh they really latched onto it i mean it, it, in japan they really latched onto that film but again i just think the weinstein brothers bob and Harvey, went on to so many other things and then got their hands in music and all that stuff yeah. it was just a it was just a, st a start a jumping off point and they forgot about it yeah. almost like the uh you know, the, the girlfriend who saw you through high school, then you became a college athlete and then a major superstar. And you're like, eh, my high school days. You know, you kind of, you know, you go, that was then, this is now. But I think the burning should be remade. They could do a lot with that now. I mean, they'll screw it up somehow. But if someone really grabs hold of it, they can do something and just update it a little bit. Change, like you said, maybe the campiness. It could be a brutal film with a, a killer with a garden shears who's burned like that. Yeah. You could do a lot, especially with special effects today. Oh yeah. I mean, well there, how many howling movies were there? Like four or five, <laughs> seven or eight leprechauns. This could easily get a second movie. I, that, oh yeah. Easily. easily. Remake, easily. reboot, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I mean, thanks. Killing has a sequel. Yes. <laughs> and that movie is garbage. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, so, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's get into it. So, uh, let's talk about first off, uh, Cropsy becoming Cropsy. So, um, you know, these kids set him on, effectively set him on fire. I, I didn't quite get, it sounded like he was just kind of a jerk. I don't know that it was to the level of let's find a, a decaying skull somewhere, which they never explained where they find the skull. That was, Dude, I, I think a lot of this movie was just hand waved like, Oh, pranks yeah, like right. this. Everyone yeah. should be in jail. <laughs> like <laughs> right. These are not pranks. These where are, did yeah. you find a skull with maggots on it? <laughs> yeah. It was a little bit like, Oh, these are just like, these are just pranks like, oh, that was just manslaughter. It's like, come on. Like, this is a little bit much for me. Lisa, have you ever actively rooted against kids more than this movie? Because I found. How old were they supposed to be? I guess oh. kind of teen. I mean, teenage like 18. Years. I think they're supposed to be 18. Probably, well, probably a range. Not the like, counselors, like the, the, the camp kids, whatever you want to call them. Probably 14, 15. Yeah. I would okay. Probably say, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fisher Stevens looked like he was eight and he weighed about 70 pounds. I could yeah. not believe Still does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the beard weighs 10. He weighs 75. He's a tiny, oh, yeah. tiny he, he never, he's in like, he should be on the cover of sickly white man magazine. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a David Spade kind of like, he, yeah. never, he, oh, yeah. he, age, he ages, but to a degree, he only ages, you know? And yeah. Jason Alexander is playing a high receding hairline, 18 year old. <laughs> Already, <laughs> first movie. He's already George. He's like, he's like twenty two at the time. He was I like tw he was twenty two. What yes. do you What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> um. Man. Uh, yeah. I, you know the 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 fire scene was we. I mean that's what hell of a prank. I I've played a few pranks. I've never put anyone in a fire situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, I've rolled some people's houses. You know, toilet now, paper. This crop, yeah. this cropsy guy was supposed to be an alcoholic. First rule of an alcohol. I'm not an alcoholic, but if I was one, my first rule, never sleep near a gas can. <laughs> that's, right. oh, yeah. that's my first rule. Why is the gas can in? If, in you're, your hammered all the, if you're hammered all the time, supposedly, according well, he to was the, the he was the maintenance guy, you know, he was the caretaker. Yeah. So obviously you had the gasoline can for the like, you know, whatever, you know, the typical uh, like anything would be in the shack. The gasoline can, I guess, because he was just a caretaker. I, I guess he lived in the, in the, in the, sh in in the, the shed. shed. That, yeah. Okay. Okay. He's not in his like own little like cabin and then the shed. Yeah. But if I'm saying, okay. but he, he's a sense. drunk. Yeah. He's sleeping in the shed. So he's sleeping in the shed with yeah. all the garden shears with the gasoline and he's hammered all yeah. the time. Apparently not yeah. a great look. Yeah. So I, I don't, I'm not saying he brought it on himself to get burned alive, but what I'm saying <laughs> is not a good scenario to start now, with. Can we talk about the level of health care that he receives uh, early on oh. uh, with the, with the uh, I guess it was the nurse, the, another doctor. He was just like, here, hey, come look at this guy. Here, he's real fucked here's up. Here's the quote. Here's a quote from the, fr here's the quote from the uh, orderly guy. That happened. That happened to me when I was in the hospital and that was 2002. <laughs> come look at this guy. What were you burned? What happened? <laughs> no, no, no. I had, I had a real quick story. I had uh, surgery. Like I had uh, double incarcerated hernia from moving a table. And they like, uh, you know, they did the surgery. I had complications. And then they had, they asked if they could bring a, a student in to look at the uh, the injury and the healing process. And they brought in like 10 girls 
like uh, who were like uh, young upcoming doctors, mm-hmm. and it looked like a it would look like a bad like 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 porno movie where they all came in. Cause you know, when you get a hernia, you obviously what's swollen is what you think. Yeah. So when they all came in, it's like, Hey, just lift this. I'm like, are you for real? And it's, I was the worst experience of my life. And it was just like, is that normal that they come in and ask a guy to do that? Cause I didn't think you could say no because the doctor said it was okay. But I didn't know the <laughs> level of humiliation that I was going to experience after that. So it was pretty, it was pretty horrible. So, so, so the so, level of healthcare in New York is pretty questionable. So, re, so rewatching this movie, you're all on Cropsey's side. At this yeah. Point. You're like, you know what? <laughs> I, I was on Cropsey's side from the get-go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. makes sense. Well, the one guy calls him a, a fucking Big Mac overdone. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That was a, that that's was a, a line. How is that not the uh, tag for this movie? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um. Oh, man. So, so, well, yeah. so first kill in this yeah. movie, uh, Cropsey kills an innocent, independent contractor in her own home. <laughs> independent contractor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, she... God, she didn't do anything. Well done. I don't need the, pe- the people at the camp. I think deserve because especially the one counselor guy. He was there, right? Yeah. So he, I think he deserves it, and the camp people maybe deserve it. Some she deserved nothing. I don't know what Cropsey was doing trying to kill the first person who talked to well, him. She, after well, she probably release. deserved some penicillin shots, but other than that, um, are you talking about the hooker that he went with the guy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, that was creepy, though. That whole scene, that was old school New York, like 42nd Street. Like just, ugh. I mean, that was just a seedy area. Even though I believe this film, this was mostly filmed in Canada, if from what I recall. Oh, really? Um, yeah. yeah, I believe so. They might have shot most of it. I believe they shot most of it in Canada, but they might have shot a couple of um, shots in Manhattan. I'm not sure. But again, back then, it was like a Wild West shot. I don't even know if anybody got permits to film in, in the late 70s, early 80s. But that that was like supposed to be 42nd Street in Manhattan, like the real what, hookers and drug addicts and stuff. It's cleaned up now. Now it's like Disney, I think, as a matter of fact. But back then, it was uh, it was it looked just like that 79, 80, 81, 82 dangerous area. Yeah, you could like the newspaper is just blowing across the street kind of level. Oh, yeah. Of, just of filthy, atmosphere. disgusting. It, yeah. it, the, the old New York was not what it was all uh, chalked up to be. Now, how do we think Cropsy got back to the camp? Uh, probably. Um, how does I'm, how does I'm, he I'm, get back there? I, I'm thinking again. Th- there's some holes in the story, no doubt about it. <laughs> if you really, if you really want to, there's some garden you know, garden size garden shear size holes in this. Uh, in this yeah, there was some. You know, maybe I don't know. You hitched the ride, like yeah, because you can imagine he's not going to get hitchhike. How does he drive? Can he drive? Like you know, you you don't really think about stuff like that. But we have questioned that too, watching it the hundred times that I've watched it with some of my friends. My brother John has seen it a bunch of times. Um, we uh, we never really went too deep into that, but that is a good question. How did he get back there? Uh, you know, uh, went uh, stowaway on a truck or something in the back. That's the best thing we can come up with, you know, that he got in some sort of delivery truck in the back, and then that's how he got there. Okay. That's, yeah. that's what you got to think, you know? Now, Lisa, these campers, all winners uh, in your book, sounds like. Who was your least favorite? I'm just going to throw out Eddie. Not a fan of this guy. I'm going to, I'm going to throw a direct quote. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. While grab me a girl then says, get the fuck out of my face. That when he does it, yeah. when she doesn't want to make out with them, that you, I don't, they all are run together. <laughs> they were, Who they were all equally terrible. Well, Jason Alexander was creepy, but not, ag- not as aggressive physically. Uh, um, there that's was not Eddie. Who's that? No, Eddie, Eddie, was the, Eddie was the guy in, in the skinny dipping. Yeah. He was the skinny dipping guy. Still lost. Okay. <laughs> the skinny the guy, the guy. guy in the forest with the with the sleeping bag. No, no, no. Oh, that was that, that was, was Glazer. That was Glazer. That would be my, that would have been my answer. Who by the way. forced her to go skinny dipping, and yes. then she got killed first. Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was an asshole. Yep. Okay. Oof. But who was your least favorite though? If you I don't had know. to pick, there was a lot of. I just really. So who's your least favorite? You just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I just thought it was weird that we 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 killed the uh, I like what you said the uh, <laughs> the independent contractor. Yeah. And then it's like f- another forty five minutes before anything else happens. There was tension though. Was there? There was well, the first person cam <laughs> stuff. You think that he's gonna go after Fisher Stevens no. in the pitch black cabin, but it's yeah. the counselor guy, right? right, they, right. they they threw some stuff into there really for a setup. So the body count is ten in this movie, and we gotta get to the main scene here. Yeah. The canoe ambush massacre when they're on the raft. 
<laughs> which is, I think, one of the all-time slasher scenes. Yeah, it was. Oh, it, it is. Was pretty it good. is. Yeah. I mean, it it is brutal. I don't know how standing up in a canoe, how he gets this much power to slash everybody, but hey, whatever. But <laughs> he really goes to town. Fisher Stevens losing some fingers. Uh, you know, the one one guy gets kind of slashed. The one girl gets slashed, then slashed again. I mean, it it's brutal. It's like he he circles yes. back for the people who didn't die after the initial hits. Mm-hmm. Um, what do what do you think about that scene, Kevin? I mean, obviously, it sounds like you you're like it, but when you first saw that, maybe when the first time you uh, were in the theater seeing that, I mean, how did you react? I mean, that it, it seems oh, like it's we, pretty crazy. We jumped out of our seat. Yeah, I mean, I remember, I remember specifically how we reacted. Um, it was it was uh it was one of the probably biggest jump scares I've ever been in a theater with where everyone the theater I saw it in Brooklyn was packed by the way that night when we went to see it, um and everybody who was there loved it walking out saying I want to see it again, um so that scene was just you know popcorn flying everywhere people screaming, uh it it, it was it, no one was expecting that you know again. Back then, they didn't give away much on the trailers, um, you know, unless you were in the theater scene on TV, they wouldn't show anything like that. Yep. So you went to the movies really expect, you know, you didn't know what to expect when you went to a, a movie. You saw a very limited window of scenes on a 20 second thing late night on TV in between the news and the 12 o'clock movie. So you, you didn't, especially for films like that, they didn't have daytime trailers. They were at night. And if you were a little kid, you didn't know anything other than what you saw in the paper with the the poster in the paper of what the film was. Well, you would get, again, word of mouth, just such a different time. So it was great because nobody ruined anything for you unless you saw somebody who saw it and they gave you head to toe what was going to happen in the movie. And that was very rare. So we, it was a, the biggest, one of the biggest jump scares I remember being a teenager going to the movies. I mean, it really, it, it definitely, got, you know, you felt your heart coming out of your chest because you didn't even, how the, because you see the boat is flat. You can't see a body. It's a freaking canoe. How did he stand up? It was almost like yeah. he <laughs> came up from under the boat. Look, and can, you know, how, how big is this guy? You know, that was another question. Is this guy a big man or is he, oh, he five, looked ten, huge. Or is he six, five? Yeah. Well, is he huge. five, ten or six, five? Right. Well, Jason came from below the boat. So right. he's got he comes from in the boat. It, yeah. It's a well, little yeah. different. This guy yeah. can I think shape shift because at one point there's the body bag where he you know he, uh, Glazer which sounds like a American Gladiator uh, yeah, is cool. like pull you know look trying to look at his girl and then he shoves jumps out of the body bag or the sleeping bag with the shears and gets him. Yeah, where was he hiding? Yeah. How did Glazer miss a full grown man? Dude, he also <laughs> in the sleeping bag. Look, with he, his he just had a forty five second sex scene. <laughs> So, was it that long? <laughs> same, same shorter. Uh, it was, I think she would agree with me. It was sad that after the sex scene, Sally goes, that's all? Yeah. <laughs> that's well, never, geez, never, yeah. never great. No, but I agree. You know, even even today watching watching it uh, from today's standards, like, you know, when they were going up to the canoe, I really expected them to see the body. I didn't expect them. I didn't expect the, uh, him to jump out of it. So it was still, I, even today, I think it still holds up. Yeah, I, 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 I think so. Now we have an annual, some of our friends, we have an annual canoeing trip that we just went on <laughs> a, few, oh, a few, few weeks ago. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, Mitch is famous for going on the canoe trip and, and tipping over all the oh, time. I flip every but year. Now, oh, really? <laughs> now, now what I'm thinking is maybe you're just checking out of the water to make sure there's no murderers. I'm going to go with that, Nate. Uh, <laughs> That's like, you're, you're, no, I'm going to start using that. Just saying, look, just making sure we don't have any cropsies around. Exactly. See, I can't now, imagine. I couldn't imagine an East Texas, Louisiana cropsy. I, that would be terrifying. It's not. It, no, it's basically <laughs> deliverance. <laughs> yeah. But, it's basically deliverance, deliverance is it, look. Deliverance is the Appalachians. All right. Let's not start Gosh. lumping them in with Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow. Uh, like, look, I'm from Louisiana, but I'm not from West Virginia. Like, that's that's what you're doing. Yes. Hierarchy of the states wise. I'm yes. Okay. You you, you finally right. got it after 100 episodes. We finally <laughs> got there. Now, Lisa, the end of this movie is so the 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 guy that Glazer has been picking on, uh, Alfred, the entire movie gets basically stalked and kidnapped. Then you got Todd with two Ds because the last movie we had a Todd. There was one D. So this is two <laughs> two D Todd. Two D Todd. Uh, what did you think? Like what did you think about the ultimate climax here? It was fine. <laughs> I, y'all yeah. Lee, know me, Lee, man. Stone Lisa. face, just stone face. I feel, I feel sad that Lisa doesn't like the film more. I feel kind of sad. Lisa, Lisa watched this. Kev, film. you got to remember, I don't like any of the crap they make me watch. <laughs> 
Lisa, <laughs> Lisa's giving the delivery like Bran Stark right now. Just yeah. like so deadpan. Le- like. Le- I, you know, funnily enough, you mentioned Bran Stark. I think I looked over and Lisa's eyes had gone it, back. Yeah. I think she warged out and just went back to the I Avengers wish. or something. It, it was <laughs> it, 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 it was fun. <laughs> I mean, he had look. He had a he had a flamethrower that wasn't pretty yeah. cool for you. Yeah, it was a flamethrower. Which you think he'd be more afraid of again. flames? Like again. Yeah. yeah, I thought he'd be more afraid of flames. Like uh, yeah, speaking of Game of Thrones, like uh, the Hound. But no, he's like I'm. You, I'm. I'm. I'm embracing it. I'm gonna lean into Dude, the it. The Hound is the closest guy to Cropsy. Yes. Yeah. Well, the Mountain and the Hound, the two brothers, well. are basically the same. Yeah, I, I mean, if you look at the movie from one perspective, Todd is just trying to murder this guy by burning him twice. <laughs> yeah, can we say Todd is the actual villain in this movie? I think so. First off, he he murders him. I mean, or put, well, put, yeah. does the does puts him on fire first, right? Yeah. Then he's telling yeah. everyone a ghost story about how he set him on fire, like he's reliving yeah. it with these new ca- kids. He's got he didn't care. He's, yeah, he did not care about what that. a psychopath. Yeah, yeah. No, first he ruined the guy's dating life, and then uh, you know his <laughs> looks were melted away, literally. And then he killed him, and he never, nothing ever. Yeah. He was not seen as the bad guy. That's yeah. the funny thing. And I, I never really. Now that you're telling me that, and as many times as I've seen the film, I hate Todd now. Oh yeah, watch Todd. Just watch that psycho tell them the story at the campfire. Yeah, that's the movie. Is. And because and, knowing and he knows that he he that it's real and that he did it. And yeah. he's like, some say he still survived. They could never find the body. And then he has his friend jump out in the yeah. mask. Yeah. He had to have known. Knowing, <laughs> knowing, knowing what, what we've heard in this podcast, Todd 100 percent becomes a doctor in the state of New York. Can we, can we, can we, can we agree I on think him? he was I think he was my doctor in 2002. <laughs> Like fucking Todd, every Todd, time. you son. Of and a then man. he told that as a campfire story. See, this guy, he's just all about the stories. He doesn't care about any people. <laughs> I never really thought about that until you guys like mentioned it. That that guy really w- got away with uh, crimes. Like uh, he, he caused a lot of this actually. Yeah, and, I know. And, and he was a hero in the end. It's a real interesting twist. He he caused it and then survived it and then killed the guy and and was really the cause of a lot of this. Well, he was one of a group of kids who did, but. Uh, again, I never thought of him as the, as the villain. So are, it's are, a those, real, are those other kids yeah. though bragging to a lot of other people about what happened? No, probably, they're probably not. They're right? probably just like normal. Like Todd's got to be the one that found the skull. He's like, hey guys, I found a dead body. Wouldn't it be really yeah. funny if we fucking put it in his? Well, uh, and, and if you, <laughs> you want to pile on to Todd, I mean, how many sexual assaults is he covering up for? Uh, being the head counselor at this camp too. Oh, well, back back then again, talk about a different time. I mean, even the treatment of the women in that movie, I, it was kind of indicative of the time. And it's not really it doesn't really hold up today. Again, you can watch all these films and the harassment of the girls and just the harassment of of kids there and the bullying and stuff. It's like if someone, a modern teenager watches that today, they're like, did that really go on back then? I'm like, it kind of did, except with the Garden Shear Killer. That didn't go on really. (laughs) The the other camp experience of the the, you know, the uh, unwanted advancements from counselors. It was a lot of debaucherous situations back then. Believe me, I know people who went to camp and just, uh, you know, tell things about 30, 35 years later. I'm like, really? That actually went on? They're like, oh, it was horrible. So wow. I'm like, again, who was watching these people? The answer is nobody. Yeah. You know who's not going to have those stories? My kid. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, I You're just, solidifying this for me, Kevin. Yeah. It's never yeah, happening so I, now. I know, I'm, I'm making like it was such a <laughs> – that's what's funny. Like we go on our show and we do this old school stuff and me and Don Tony always say it, it was not really a grand old time with a lot of things back then. There was a lot of, you know, situations that was so inappropriate. But again, we kind of knew it then, but no one spoke out on it. There wasn't these groups and these things. Now, granted, there were people, who, you know, people got arrested, things that happened. But there was just a lot of of really inappropriate behavior going on. From all sides. I mean, from drug use to sexual advancements to all that stuff. But again, it was just a sign of the times. And it's funny that a lot of people might just look back and think it's funny. But it really wasn't funny if it wasn't you that it was cool. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. If you weren't involved, if you weren't bullied, like I I wasn't bullied as a kid, but I know kids who were. And they still like today still have the the remnants of it of like 35, 40 years later. I have friends who talk about it. They it's it's uh, it's it's traumatic. You know what I mean? If you get. You know, uh, people do stuff to your camp or they pull these real pranks that are pretty much crimes. Um, so what you said, people burning stuff that I'm sure that has happened where people have never accounted for crimes that they were involved in or pranks that went wrong. Cl- clearly, there's accidents, but let's chalk it up. There's just a lot of assholes too who go to camp. 
So you know I, I mean? I'm talking about the Tantra psycho. Of that's that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> if you that if you know a guy an named anti an anti camp podcast. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're very anti camp. We Texas have we have we have, we have two nemesis now: camp in the state of Idaho. <laughs> Those, yeah, it's just a what's yeah. a not what's a not what's an Idaho exactly. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't even know, I don't know anybody from Idaho. I don't think I've ever met. I don't know. Nate from. has Nate has a crusade against Idaho. I we, we're st- <laughs> it's I, who even knows. All right, well, listen, guys, I, I got to tell you, you know, you're stuck in the woods. A guy is chasing you. Who's his face is melted, uh, and he's got Gordon shears. But it could be worse. Could be worse. Not that bad. For me, it's all about perspective. It's what you make of it. It could be worse. It so then in this segment, so Kevin, this segment, um, we we try to, you know, look at the bright side for these characters. You know, like, yeah, you're in this situation, but, you know, it's not so bad. Uh, so, Nate, like, what would you, what would you, how could this be worse? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, for Todd, it could have been worse. He could just be in jail, which is where he belongs. <laughs> That's my first one. Yeah. But I, I think one of the reasons that some of these kids ended up surviving uh, is because Cropsey is coming after them. But he, he only has a very short range weapon. Imagine Cropsey with a long range weapon. Mm. What if Cropsey had just brought a gun instead? You know, oh, I was going to say a garden hoe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you can re- a little more reach. Yeah, he's throwing know. rakes like <laughs> from <laughs> distance. <laughs> the, rake, the rakes are just sharpened. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it could. I mean, he had to get really close to everybody, so that gave people a chance. Like Todd, for instance. Todd takes a hit and keeps on going. That that's maybe the one silver lining is that is that you know he had to get real close, gave you an opportunity to escape. Yeah. So that I, that's the one silver line I can come up with there. I mean, I think I think if you're Jason Alexander, like all your friends are dead, but you made it. So there's that. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, yeah, I forgot that Jason Alexander made it. Holly Hunter was kind of she didn't play much of a role in that. She she was actually one of the biggest stars. She's an Academy Award winner. She was in a lot of big films uh, down the road, like maybe 10 years past. But she uh, she had a very insignificant part in that film. You have to yeah. you blink, you miss her. Yeah, I was I was waiting for a serenity now. Like just like during like, <laughs> like all the all the all the canoes are gone. It's like serenity now. Yeah. Serenity now. Come Lisa, on. would you have enjoyed this more if it was more Seinfeld? Yes, I would have. <laughs> more of a Seinfeld uh cropsy top uh crossover. Yeah, that would have been great. Add Kramer in there. <laughs> oh, Kramer oh. would be cropsy. <laughs> Kramer probably would be cropsy. He would, he a uh, Newman, no. Newman would be crafty. Yeah, Wayne Knight, oh, exactly. Yeah, Wayne yeah, Knight you. is crafty. Right, you're right. Come yeah. on, crafty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't even have to do the those real genres. I yeah. feel like that is perfect. Make that a show. I would watch that Netflix all day, yeah. every day. Uh, all right. Well, with that said, we're gonna just move into our final cut. Final cut. <laughs> Okay, so our rating out of 10, random scale, whatever you want to use. Uh, Lisa. Let's get the low one out let's, of the let's, way. Let's, let's, let's set the low bar. What are you giving this movie after so much dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Can, for, first, any positives? Yeah, any positives. Give me, give, me, give me a positive in this one. Jason Alexander had hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's feeling bad about himself again. <laughs> yeah. He was feeling good that he survived. Now he's like, no. oh, but I'm going to lose my hair. Well, yeah. Might as well just die. <laughs> and anything plot wise, any kills, nothing redeeming is what you're saying. Um, I'm trying to even remember. There was a baseball game. Is that? There, there <laughs> the was. Baseball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause that was my favorite part of the movie was I don't the know. baseball. So there game. was the raft scene was pretty cool. We thought, yeah, they made a raft kind of survivor. Yeah, where did Jason Alexander all of a sudden get the wilderness skills to build a raft out of wood? Dude, he's like, I got this. You know, half the time he's making <laughs> sexual jokes very quickly. Yeah. Very Seinfeld esque. other half of the time he's learning how to tie ropes. <laughs> That's off camera though. <laughs> I bet, I, that's, I bet that psycho Todd has a rope tying class. Oh my to. God. Of course he does. <laughs> of course he does. Oh my God. Yeah. Come on. You know how it could have been worse? Cause you didn't ask me. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Cropsy could have been one day from retirement. Oh, <laughs> these sheer. I'm going to put these shears to rest after tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh those were his God. retirement shears. That was a oh, gift. That was a gift from like the a camp. Gold, like a like a like a gold 
handled. <laughs> yeah. Instead shears. of instead uh, of getting like a watch, he gets a, like a brand new sharpened pair of shears to guard it gold, in, into gold his shears, retirement. golden shears, gold, exactly. Golden shears. This is very hobo with a shotgun esque. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Lisa, out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm trying to put it against some of the the ones that I haven't liked the most. I mean, compared to like, you know, the like, suckling, the suckling like a, and thanks well, killing. And th- those are, yeah, just, you've seen well, some garbage movies. Yeah. This was at least better than, than those. Probably. I don't know, like a three out of 10. Wow. Something. <laughs> something I can't even, can't, think even of something. can't even muster the will. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa's the person Skulls. that she was at this camp. She'd be like, I'm just staying in the cabin. I'll just, I wouldn't have gone I'm to waiting. camp. I've, I never went to camp. I had no desire to go to camp. I'm squarely Nate's kid. I'm yeah. like, camp? No, I'm good. I'm staying home. <laughs> I got video games to play. I'm, I'm yeah. good. If there's going to be a horror movie, it's going to be Psycho with my mom. Okay? <laughs> Not any of these strangers out in this camp. I'm going to stay at home. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I think I think, I think, think for me, I I do like the campiness a little bit more of it. Um, you know, it's it's certainly got its has its flaws. Uh, I've seen better work out of Tom Savini, even though I know he, <laughs> he loves this one a lot, but the rap scene itself is a few points uh, just on its own. I'm going to give this uh six out of 10 garden shears. Okay. Uh, Kevin, how about you, man? Uh, well, one thing I wanted to bring up, which is really important about this film, if we, Fail to mention it when doing an injustice was Rick Wakeman from the band Yes. Yes. His music score was tremendous. Uh, the music score for this, uh, the synth rock stuff, which is really, this movie set the precedent for it in a lot of ways. Um, there was a lot of other films that followed suit, used Rick Wakeman as their musical director. Mm-hmm. The music score is eerie. Even we guys hear the ending uh, of the film in the intro. It's really chilling. It actually stays with you. And I, can, I, I could actually put it up there with the Halloween uh, piano theme from Carpenter. Even Carpenter talked about the burning music score uh, one time from Rick Wakeman was tremendous. And that's why it's too bad they didn't capitalize on that because it's a real haunting kind of melody. Um, and it, it really didn't get its press. But Rick Wakeman went on to do a ton. Of, and yes, it was a very influential band in the 70s and 80s. He just kind of did this stuff on the side. But that was an important part of this, this film was uh, the music score. Yeah. No, absolutely. 100% agree. Yeah, I mean, so, and you can, like I said, Rick's done some other stuff, like, uh, and, and some other films, too. Like, Just Before Dawn was another one that was tremendous. Um, it's just like a e- eerie shit. Um, and my brother even mentioned, make sure you talk about Rick Wakeman. I was like, oh, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> um, I would say I would give it, to me, I would give it an 8 out of 10 as far as... Uh, uh, overall, I thought the storytelling was decent. There were some holes in the story, but I think since it was based off of something that's a New York legend that I heard about in the 70s before mm-hmm. this film came out, um, it, that kind of played a role in it. And the fact I saw it in theaters when it first came out, opening night, it was yeah. in May of yeah. 81. That's awesome. And so, so to me, it kind of, maybe I'm overstating it because of having those fond memories of being 13 years old and going to rated off films. And this was one of the first ones I went to that year. Um, but I would say it's an eight out of 10 and I think it should be remade or rebooted, even though I'm sure a lot of loyalists will be like, Oh, fuck that. Just leave it alone. You know, they'll just ruin it. They'll turn it into some bullshit movie. Uh, and also the other thing, I, I think the make the, as good as Savini is, I wasn't crazy about the, the payoff of seeing him in the end. Yeah. Kind of look like the, the ele- We didn't talk about that. Uh, the, and I can stay for a little longer, by the way. Okay. Uh, the, the, he's like the elephant man meets, uh, I, I, I kind of just, uh, you know, that, that melted face look a little, a little like uh, the later Jason, if you guys remember in part, uh, like part three or four, when Jason was really messed up yeah. uh, from Friday the 13th. But obviously this is before that. I, I wasn't that crazy about the way it, looked. it was. Oh, it was really over the top. And listen, I've seen, I've seen burn victims. I used to go out with someone who was a nurse in a burn unit center and that, she said seen worse than that picture that was over exaggerated, oh, wow. but his face off to the side. And it just, I, I don't know. I think it was a little over the top. It should have been a little more human, I guess is what I'm saying. I, I agree with you. Yeah. That was, that was part of my comment about, yeah, it's not what I thought wasn't some of Savini's better work. Yeah. Um, it, it was like house of wax. Yeah. It, it yes. Yes. A, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like the mouth was the only thing. Like if you saw the mouth, I, I just like when I, cause you know, you have to freeze frame it literally, or you get like a still shot online because when you saw it in the movies, it was so, it was so quick. And even when, you know, you, you rewind it. Remember when we see it on VHS, like, 
let's see it again because we you don't see the mo- you know we say the monster we couldn't see the monster and it was really a man who was burned but we would back then we would call it the monster mm-hmm. so uh and it, and he wasn't a monster that was the whole thing i mean he was a monster in theory but the the, the makeup yeah and also in fairness that's savini just starting out you know what i mean i i also read that he said he didn't get enough time to finish yeah uh, the face work that he wanted to do also. So that, that could be it because this was kind of done on a small budget. I, I'm wondering if he had a little bit more time, if we would have got a, a better face, yeah. you know, well, you know, it's interesting. Cause I, I, I used to really like that. Um, sci-fi had a show called face off. I don't know if either of y'all ever saw it or heard of Is it. it with Nick cage. It's not the Nick cage. <laughs> oh no. yeah. I, I heard, I think I've heard of that show though. So basically they brought in like special effects, uh, guys and they, and they had like industry people there as the judge, but, the idea is that they had like three days or so, so so many set hours where they actually had to come up with some monster like cowl face paint makeup and create a whole character. Wow. Um, and, and it showed them how they did the latex mask, how they did, you know, the you know, they had the models there. They're showing them how they do all the cool like movie effects and they're talking about getting like stage ready. And, uh, you know, I think your comments today that that show gave me gives me a better appreciation of what you're kind of saying, because. Yeah, it's in, it's incredible what they can do in, in a short amount of time. And yeah, Sveeney has certainly more time. He's, yeah. Oh, <laughs> he's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's, yeah. The, he's the master. There's no one better, in my opinion. But um, but yeah, it, it, the burn looked weird. <laughs> it did. It did look, <laughs> it look weird. Especially when you have like Freddy Krueger, bird victim, like, you know, a few years later, it looks... Yeah, like he makes person. Freddy Krueger look amazing. Yeah, bird right. face <laughs> Right. Wow, yeah, Freddy Krueger looks like... He's just like the Brad Pitt compared to this dude. First, what? like just crazy. Okay, so I just want to throw out that while I was looking up all the information on this movie, I was listening to the entire soundtrack. So that oh, was, cool. Yeah. So just to get in the vibe. So for yeah. me, bare minimum one to two points just for the music because the music <laughs> nice. the music is yeah. great for sure. Very good. You can tell in the trailer, like. This is kind of like the stereo. This this became kind of like a staple of how the the trailers and the movies sounded at the time because mm-hmm. it was so iconic. And this was the, like the first time. So total points for that. Um, it is hard to watch it now with how gross the dudes are <laughs> <laughs> because I see this. This is like the third time I've but, seen it. Yeah, and man, like. It does not age well with that. Yeah, and you know a lot of you know you a lot of eighties movies kind of have a little bit of that vibe, but it's not. I mean, most of them, it's like you get it. Yeah, I, I, this so, was just yeah, a this more. was more. Yeah, like you know, <laughs> we've all you know, there's there's a uh, you know all the you know the Jason movies, you know yep. Halloween, all those from the time period. There's yep. a lot of slashers from well, that time. Women are not obviously. Uh, treated as well as they are now. Well, it's usually just one. I think the problem is it's usually just like one dude who's the creep, and because you're supposed to be like, I can't wait for him to fucking get offed. You know, that's 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 yeah. why he's there. This was this every was like dude. all everyone. <laughs> yeah, the way? thing that's crazy is that Alfred is like the the dude that is getting bullied all the time. How does he respond to getting bullied by doing peeping in the, in the girl's shower? shower. <laughs> Yeah, he was a creep. He was a creep too. Did you guys recognize him from another iconic film that he was in a year later? Uh, that character of Alfred. Do you know who he is? No, no. I don't. He, he was he was um, Rat in the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh yeah, yeah. Holy. Wow. Yeah, he he was one of the main characters That's... in Fast Times at Ridgemont a year later, which was a huge hit. So his name's Brian Backer, that actor, and he had a little bit of a run. Then he was in Police Academy, and he was in a couple other things. Then he disappeared. But he was, yeah, he had a little bit of a run as an actor. The burning was his first thing, but Fast Times Ridgemont High really put him on the map. Yeah. Shit, I totally. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I was sitting there watching like, but do I know this guy? There were so I just, many. There were so many. I mean, I already skipped over uh, like Leah Ayers, who ended up being in Bloodsport. I I, I, I was trying to keep <laughs> it to like right. the more that's famous. Right. Uh, I was like, there's so many people in this movie. It's crazy. Like Bloods. for one of these slasher I movies. Th- I, think, I think Ned Eisenberg was in this movie too, who went on to be a pretty notable actor. Um, there's a couple. Yeah, there was a few other actors who weren't as famous as uh, Jason Alexander and stuff. But uh, a lot of people came out. And again, the Weinstein connection, because they had an agency and they did television and film and they personally managed uh, Hollywood stars. So, I mean, yeah, it's no surprise that so much came out. That's how they got Rick Wakeman from Yes, because Yes was a big band then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes had, I think Yes had a big hit, Owner of a Lonely Heart. Uh, back then, it was like a number one single uh, in America. Yes, was having a resurgence of uh, popularity from the mid '70s. So I think Rick Wakeman was no like cheap guy to get to do the score for this film. He was actually like a good get for them. Yeah. So again, my, the, the influence 
and that film and what came out of it and people who went on to become heads of studios. Name another slasher film that, that has that lineage. There is none. Yeah. You know? Agreed. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, I think retroactively Lo- owner of a lonely heart was probably written about Cropsey also. So I mean, <laughs> it probably, it probably <laughs> like, look, this is my inspiration. <laughs> okay. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't so, think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one thinks about that <laughs> owner of a lonely heart much better than the owner of a burning heart and then he oh, changed it no. because burning heart ended up being in the rocky four soundtrack so oh the, oh, and the burning heart <laughs> exactly yeah, so i think that's probably how it went down in, ter- in terms of the movie that but yeah the <laughs> circling back the uh <laughs> the harvey weinstein dialogue about with the dudes is just so egregious there was no all the, all the women were fine yeah. All the men were just terrible. So I got a dock at a couple points for that. The raft massacre. First of all, how they made the raft. Amazing. Yeah. Second of all, yeah, I, I think I, I told Lisa, we were watching it. I was like, if this were us and it, well, on our canoe trip and yeah. we would not have been able to do this. No. Make that raft. We could barely make a fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, can I, can I let you guys know something? Yeah. You know, the guy who played, it's interesting and not th- just because you're from Texas, you don't have to necessarily know who he is, but um, the guy, Brian Matthews, who played the actor that we're all bagging on the, vil- the real uh, villain in the burning. Yeah. Did you know he ran for the Republican primary in Texas in 2012? Oh no. I didn't yeah. Know. Brian Matthews. Yeah. Brian Matthews oh, ran for a position in the Republican primary in Texas in 2012. Yep. And it so, sounds and like he, he did was, not win. Well, he's, he's no, not, he, 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 no, he did not win. Not getting my vote after this movie. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I think that they said they called it the burning factor is why he didn't win. Oh. <laughs> I have but a no, burning he's, desire. He's a, politi- he's a politician in, uh, in your state. So that's interesting. Oh my God. He, that is crazy. I have a burning desire to help the people. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to lock away the criminals. Oh, I can see it now. That's. <laughs> Jeez. All right. That, there goes one point in my review. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, the, the raft, the raft massacre scene is iconic. Um, the music is iconic. I wish Cropsey, I wish you would have seen a little bit more of them. Uh, but I, I, you know, the cast is great. Even, even retroactively, I thought like Jason Alexander, that was his first movie. I mean, he was talking circles around everybody. It was doing great with the dialogue. Even if it was kind of cringy, he, you know, you could see there was some talent for some of the people there. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm going to give it six out of 10 loose canoes. Loose <laughs> canoes. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's certainly worth, worth a watch for horror fans. Um, I, probably if you're an unsuspecting victim, nah, nah, just, nah. you're not going to enjoy it. it cle- nah. Lisa clearly <laughs> his head gave up on it. He's like, I, I'm a real big Seinfeld completionist. So I have to go back and watch the burning no. now. But I, you, you know, I think, I think you're right. If you've never seen it and you're a horror fan, it's, it's certainly worth the watch. Um, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think Kevin, yeah, you probably do benefit from having seen it so early on. I think, now there's just been so many slasher films. There's been so many um, that coming back and retroactively watching for the first time, you know, I, I think it, maybe it loses a little of its uh, charm that way, but still to me, still worth checking out. Um, this, this movie to me seems kind of similar to when we had Lisa watch uh, black Christmas. Yeah. Black Christmas. Oh, one uh, of the, ori- the original, the original. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My yeah. probably my top three favorite horror films. Of oh, all time. Ma- amazing. film! Yeah. But Christmas. when you watch it now, it's, it's, it's started. So many of like the tropes or like the things that the movies do that you've already right. seen the same thing, but like tweaked for a more modern kind of time period that you're just like, Oh yeah, I've already seen that a lot. It's like, yeah. But when it first came out, it was like the, originator of the stuff. Yeah. I think the burning did that a little bit, even though people thought it was kind of a, a rip off of Friday the 13th, but I actually read that this, this was written before Friday the 13th, the story actually. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think this kind of, I mean, even if listening to the trailer, I mean, basically it made all the, it made every trailer afterward basically ripped that off. And yeah. there's a lot of stuff that this definitely started for sure. So definitely like if you're into slashers, uh, this is kind of like, a, you know, it's like, it's not like a cult classic cause people know about it, but it wasn't like popular. It's like right in that little middle kind of yeah. range. Right. Yeah. And so a lot, I think a lot of people have missed it. Definitely check it out if you're a horror fan for sure. Well, very cool. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this review. Uh, First off, Kev, thank you so much for joining us. Um, oh, thanks for having me on, guys. That was fun. I 
like I said, burning is uh, it's good memory. So as soon as I heard about that, I'm like, oh, I'm all in on that. We we should just we should just do a series where it's like. How many movies when Kevin was underage did he see that we could talk about? <laughs> oh, we could do we could do a, we could do a whole bunch of them. That. I mean, but they were and they were all ironically they were all mostly horror films. I mean, yeah. with the exception of maybe the the jerk Steve Martin, nineteen seventy nine, I was like eleven, got into that and uh, Animal House. But all of them were uh, slasher films, all of them. I mean, from just before dawn, I, I, you name him like the maniac in 1980. I want to see Ooh. that one. Oh my God. <laughs> right? what? Wow. Yeah, that was, oh, that's yeah, that worse was, than this one. That was, that was, uh, and again, uh, you know, people just walk by like a bunch of little kids sitting and watching maniac is like, well, where are your parents? Uh, they're out in the getting refreshments Holy and no one even checked shit. on it. It's just yeah, pretty, little lawbreakers, but yeah, I wouldn't, again, now being the age I am now and having nephews who are 10, 12 years old stuff, I would never want them to see stuff like that. I mean, we, and I don't, you know, my parents were good parents, but they were busy working jobs. My father's in the military. Yep. So we, we weren't running amok, but we just kind of did whatever we wanted to, but we weren't the worst for it. Like, yeah, I had some nightmares probably when I was a kid for some <laughs> of these films. But other than that, it wasn't like lack of parent. It just, again, you kind of just did your own thing. And as long as you stayed out of actual tr real trouble. Yeah. Um, a lot, we, a lot of kids were doing kind of adult things back then, especially the, like I said, the rated R movies, it was just so easy to get in. It wasn't, even, it wasn't even a question that you can't go see it. You, f you'll find a way. And, and today I just don't think that would be the case, but I, I don't really frequent the movies that much today. Like you were asking me at the beginning of this, if I want to see the Avengers yeah. and, uh, I, who knows when I'll eventually see it. Most likely I'll see it on in demand or something like that. I probably won't see it in the theaters. I'll see it when it comes out on HBO or wherever it's going to be shown in four months from now. You know what I mean? So, uh, I don't go to the movies that often, uh, these days anymore. Maybe I saw one movie in the last nine years and that was, um, uh, uh, Halloween. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the remake. And now and I'm just imagining. Only because all my friends were going and they, they picked me up. If they didn't pick me up, I wouldn't have gone. Yeah. So, <laughs> so now that you're saying that, I'm just imagining, like, imagine, Mitch, imagine you have little nieces and nephews. Imagine your 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 nephew turns 12 and you go, oh, well, here's your copy of Maniac. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny. My ne my nephew, my nephew would, uh, he he's not, he he's very anti um, horror. He do, He's, yeah, not into it in that world. His younger sister, though, okay, who's my who's my uh, goddaughter, you know, um, she she's like her, she's like her loves rock music, like her she has a soccer playlist called Get Woke, and it's like mostly disturbed. <laughs> oh, wow, oh wow, okay, that's uh, awesome. I mean, she's like nine, so you're saving you're saving <laughs> you're saving the Maniac Blu-ray for her. Oh yeah, well she she was playing, you know, I was playing, I was showing them at Christmas the um. Uh, Five Night at Freddy's or whatever the, that game, and uh, my nephew was like. No, this is this is creepy. I'm not playing this. And, and she, my niece was like, "Oh, let's play it." And like she's wanted to play it like all night. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I would, yeah, her would she would probably get maniac before. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna we're just gonna, the, <laughs> the podcast is gonna pre apologize for the terribleness yeah. that will happen once she gets older. That that's <laughs> right. So yeah, uh, make sure if you haven't already, you can check Kevin Castle out on his uh, main show, Don Tony and Kevin Castle Show, where they talk about uh, wrestling. They have a Review usually Monday nights after every Raw, and then also pay per view recaps. Um, and also check out their Patreon. Uh, I think it's just if you search Don Tony and Kevin Castle, you'll find it. Uh, mm -hmm. And you get a I, I'm a I'm a member of it. You get a lot of great shows and content. Um, and you do you specifically do uh, Castle Chronicles and Dark Chronicles. Um, I'm not sure if there's another show you also, I know you kind of jump in on some of the other ones here and there, but yeah, I, I, can't, I think I do 47 shows at this point. I don't remember <laughs> yeah. what else. I do. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're a busy I, guy. <laughs> yeah. I do. I know the castle, yeah. Castle Chronicles and, and dark Chronicles. And we do, um, actually after I get out of here and, uh, well, not a few minutes, probably half hour for now, I'm going to join, uh, Don Tony and, uh, missionary Thomas for, uh, Tuesday night extra, which is kind of a SmackDown review and any breaking news that broke out in the last couple of days. And we kind of just give that as an extra to Patreon people. So, oh, very nice. cool. Well, okay, so hold on. I'd be remiss if I didn't say one last word here. Speaking of wrestling, is Cropsy basically just mankind? I think uh, mankind borrowed some stuff off of Cropsy. Yeah, There's saying, no doubt about it. Just saying. Uh, if Cropsy could, could show up on Firefly Funhouse next week, and I would not bat an eye or blink or anything. It would make, uh, oh, it'd fit. What do you guys think of that, by the way? What do you guys think of the five, five, five? I'm curious. I'm curious. So what, Nate uh, doesn't watch wrestling. I'm around, I'm but around these wrestling, wrestling jaded 
wrestling podcasters all the time, so I want to hear. Uh, <laughs> I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about my guys that I'm with. Yeah, sure. But sure, other sure. other other podcasts who just you know want to piss on everything as soon as it comes out, they don't give anything a chance. I actually like it because I'm already seeing. He already looks like he's unraveling, and it's a dark thing. It's not some kind of kitty thing. It's actually very dark, and I think it's going to get even worse as weeks go on. Yeah, so uh, I'll say this: uh, Nate does not watch wrestling. Oh, uh, he bar- oh, okay. we were beforehand. We were he was asking me what John Cena's uh, moves were. He's like, that's the only one I oh, remember. Really? Okay, <laughs> I'm the I'm I'm the wrestling. Mankind might be my last reference, yeah. like the like the most recent wrestler that I know. Probably. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, for me now, I uh, I'm a Bray. Wyatt. I've been a Bray Wyatt truther. For I mean, I stopped watching. I think a good bit during the uh, a, a ruthless aggression era. Um, I right. came back largely because my nephew was getting into it, and that's when the Shield was there, and he hated the Shield. But um, I was really into the Wyatt family when they came out. I've been kind of following him there. I I love the gimmick. I think it's it's really well done. I think he's he's clearly given some reign to just kind of do something with it. Um, yeah. My worry is that Kane's going to show up at the next pay per view and beat him clean in the next well, I know you know, five is. minutes. Oh, yeah. you do know who Kane is. That's right. He's Undertaker's brother. Oh. Everyone knows. Oh, that. there you go. She knows. <laughs> Come that. on. Yeah. Nate has like all these wrestling video games, but doesn't know any <laughs> for, for the N64. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I really enjoy it. Um, I'm excited to see. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, creative does right by by Bray, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, again, it's you know, it's it's something you know because we're talking about uh, horror or scary kind of stuff. I think it's one of those things. It's there's not too many dark characters anymore. The Undertaker's on his yeah. way out. You got Alistair Black, but I think Bray Wyatt's the last of uh, last of of hope for a good like horror character. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, Nate, you'd probably appreciate Bray Wyatt a little bit more because like in in this Firefly Funhouse, he just introduced this uh, rambling rabbit character because it, again, it's it's Pee Wee's Playhouse. But the rabbit looks like the rabbit from Donnie Darko. Okay, I'm in on yeah, that. Um, okay. and, and his original cult leader character was based off of um, Cape Fear. Uh, okay, so and he's he's pulled in a lot of horror movie elements and references into his character and his promos and everything. Um, I will never watch it, but it sounds cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you some clips. Watch, but it sounds really cool. I'm going to send you some clips. Uh, you don't it need to watch like the House of Horrors match or anything. You just skip that. We'll, we're just going to... How close to the edge is this? Do you remember Edge? I, I was going to ask, do you even know who Edge was? Oh, so, God. Nate, I'm so proud of you. That's a, I'm so proud of oh, you. Wow. <laughs> I'm announcing my no, retirement. You know, <laughs> I, I got news for you. They know some more wrestling more than some podcasters who have their own wrestling podcast. Okay. You know, you know, you know as much as they do, really, Nate, to be honest with you. You heard it here. We're starting so, a wrestling podcast, Nate. <laughs> you should start. Yeah, you should turn it to a it's gonna it's gonna morph into a wrestling podcast. Look, okay, here's right, here would be right. the unsuspecting victim for the wrestling. Part. First of all, that's true. The, okay, I have a wrestling story. This is off the rails. The last time we played, so whenever we have, when I have a party, ends up being WrestleMania 2000 on N64. Last time we played, Mitch got destroyed by China. I'm pretty sure he was the Undertaker. I was the Undertaker. And he got destroyed. I didn't remember the control. (laughs) That, oh, likely excuse. Yeah. I want to say, so in terms of wrestling, in terms of wrestling, I can always beat you in that level. That's all, that's all I want to say. Yeah, I did the Undertaker bad in that uh, in that game. China. Oh, did you? China yeah. took me out in like a a, a Boston crab. It was really, <laughs> it's really embarrassing. <laughs> it was very embarrassing. <laughs> you were out somewhere out in the ring, just like clotheslining whoever, yes. you, not helping me. Nope. And that, that tag match. I go, you know, what? I fi- I figure the Undertaker can take China now in Mitch's. No, not when I'm not when I'm uh, Paul bearing it up. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. Well, Kevin, we're going to have to have you back here soon. I think we, uh, we've got sure. a wrestling theme month coming. Oh, um, yep. I'm forcing Nate. Uh, it was my idea. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, there you go. Call it. We're going to call it summer stab. So we'll definitely have summer you back. Stab. Yeah. Definitely have you back for that. Um, with some WWE studios movies. I, I think they, what, they did Oculus, right? Nate, they did. They, oh, there's a lot. They, yeah. They surprisingly have released a number of horror movies Two Le- with Leprechaun origins. We're not watching Leprechaun. Well, I'm just saying it's one of them. Oh, yeah, horrible. <laughs> they, no, stop trying to put Leprechaun every, in every themed month. I saw, I saw Oculus. Oculus wasn't that bad. No, I, no I, Oculus I, I is probably the best that of that group. And I've heard, yeah, you know, yeah. I haven't actually seen see no evil, uh, one or two. That's Kane. Um, that's Kane, but I heard two is actually pretty good. I didn't see two. I saw. Matter of fact, I was watching the trailer for it the other day. 
Uh, but see no evil one. I saw that in, uh, no, I didn't see that in theaters, but I saw, I got a, like a pirated copy of it while I was out in the theaters. It was, I mean, I thought they could have did something with that character too. I mean, it was a pretty sick character, nothing original, but it was, it was a pretty, it was a lot of good kills in uh, see no evil one. He's like, I could run for office or film see no evil three. I'm gonna go I'd on. rather see him in film than see him ever again. <laughs> on the wrestling gimmick i am sick of kane i want gotcha. nothing to do yeah <laughs> agreed <laughs> all right man well cool well yeah we'll definitely have you back um thanks again everyone for tuning in and just keep telling yourself it's only a movie good night <laughs>